being unappreciative. And kid wants to, he's not getting it. He's complaining about his food. Okay, um, my name is Nathan Cutris, uh, for those of you that don't know. So I'm going to start with Zerah 17, verse 67. If you are afflicted in the middle of the sea, you forget your idols and sincerely implore him alone. But as soon as he saves you to the shore, you revert. Indeed, the human being is unappreciative. Zerah 22, verse 38. God defends those who believe. God does not love any betrayer unappreciative. Zerah 31, verse 32. When violated wave, I mean, sorry, when violent waves surround them, they implore God, sincerely devoting their prayers to Him alone. But as soon as He saves them to the shore, some of them revert. Um, none of them, none discards our revelation except those who are betrayers and appreciative. Sorry, I forgot to switch it, um, like Evan. Uh, so the next, oh yeah, no, this one still. The, this is really unappreciative. God saves you from a disaster, and you just go back to worshiping your idols. You know God is the one who saved you. Uh, when you prayed for God to help you, he did. Nothing went your way when you were worshiping your idols. But when you turned to God, you were saved. Uh, God is almighty protector. We can't give lip service at all. We can't just turn to God when we are near death and then go back to worshiping our idols when we are saved. We have to make him our number one priority and know that he is our one and only God. He is the one true God, the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the heavens and the universe. When Zerah 2 verse 186, when my servants ask you about me, I am always near. I always, I mean, I answer their prayers when they pray to me. This, the people shall respond to me and believe in me in order to be guided. Zerah 6 verse 41. The fact is, only him you implore and he answers your prayer. If he so wills and you forget your idols. I was reading this article online about this atheist who mocked God, who had mocked God, and then shortly after he flew his plane into an Alaskan snowstorm and then ran out of fuel. So he then tried everything, like calling the FAA flight service operator and nothing would work. He was flying on empty for 30 minutes, then the engine started missing. By the engine started missing, so you know, it means a spark plug or all of them is or are not firing reliably. The engine will run either rough or erratically. Um, so his mind turns to his very last option, God. He had never prayed before, but in desperation, he lifted up a silent prayer. Um, he, asked God, excuse me, he asked God to help him and protect him. God answered his prayer. Immediately after his prayer, the plane popped out of the snowstorm, but he still had to fly another 20 miles to reach the airport. He made it and landed safely. Now, there is no reason at all his plane should have made that distance with no fuel. He believed God had added um, an hour of fuel in his tank to save his life. When he landed, he said to himself, and I'm actually quoting him on the article, inshallah, he said, when I landed, I was a different boy. I was not a Christian but I was a believer in God. God is a hearer, a mission. So God always, um, God always, God will always answer your, our prayers and guide us in the right path. As long as we don't give lip service and actually strive to do better. If God helps you once, I mean, if, yeah, if God helps you once and you go back to your old ways and decide to worship idols and be unappreciative, then you will suffer the consequences. God will not guide such wicked people. We have to pray to God and trust that he is running everything, then repent and reform for our sins we have committed. God is forgiver, most merciful. Uh, when Satan challenged God's absolute authority, uh, verse 38, verse, I mean, Zora 38, verse 69, you and I did not make a firm stand against Satan. God has given us a chance on this earth to redeem ourselves by denouncing Satan and upholding God's absolute authority. Appendix 7. Uh, Zerah, I don't know, yeah, see Appendix 7. Um, Zerah 2, verse 54. 
It is the ego that led to Satan's fall. It is the ego that caused our exile to this world. And it is the ego that is keeping most of us from redemption to God's kingdom. We were given a chance up in the heavenly field to side with either Satan or God. We didn't know if Satan could be a God or not. So we wanted to see our, for ourselves. That was our first mistake. Then God gave us a second chance and asked us to repent. But we refused. He then wanted free choice and... We then wanted free choice, and after we failed with two chances already. God is so merciful, he gave us a third chance, a third and final chance to make the right decision and make it back to him. God is the most gracious, most merciful. Uh, we should not waste this third and final chance. We need to be grateful. Um, we need to be grateful for the blessings God has bestowed upon us. Uh, and not be unappreciative. Here's something I would like to share with you all. I was um about um I was eating food with uh, some submitters around a month ago. It was all you can eat, and it was a type of restaurant where you type your order in on this iPad, and then they serve it to you. The food was amazing, praise God. And one of the submitters I was with said this to me: After what we did up in the heavenly field, look at how we are being treated. Praise God. Just look at all the provisions God has provided for us. We have movie theaters, water parks, games, sports, restaurants, and amazing places to visit and have fun. We have so many provisions that we don't deserve after what we did up in the heavenly field. God could have put us straight to hell, but God is so merciful that he has given us this final chance to make it back to him. Um, let's not be unappreciative of this third and final chance. Uh, don't waste it, so finally. Um, don't, don't waste it. Uh, yeah. We need to repent, reform, kill our egos enough and, and follow all of God's commandments. And God willing, we will, uh, then we will be accepted back into heaven. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, any questions, comments? Wamid. MashaAllah, Nathan. Uh, great speech. Uh, Thanks, I appreciate that you know, give it to the time to um, speak. Uh, I just want to hear your elaboration. Um, in the beginning, there was a picture of this guy with the food. Yeah. And it's like he's complaining or something. I would love you to just elaborate more on that picture. I want to hear what you think about it. Like, it like, like the action of like complaining about food and um, just elaborate on it. Um, I would appreciate it. If someone it. at a restaurant ordered something and let's say the waiter made one tiny mistake, like they put, let's say they ordered a burger and they put mushrooms on it and they didn't want mushrooms. Or no, let's say something more simple like a tomato. They put one tomato on the burger, the person didn't want it. Just like the, this person, for example, got his meal. There was probably like, it's from the picture, it looked like there was one, like one, one thing missing, and it's like he was like complaining about it. So like we should just be, like it happened, just take the tomato off or whatever it is, and just be appreciative. Don't let them throw the burger out and get you a new one, that's just a waste. Yeah, okay, yeah. Can we keep the side chatter to a, a minimum, please? Because we want to be respectful, thank you. Uh, we have Zach and Evan have questions. Marshall, good speech. Thanks. Um, how have you been unappreciative in your life? What? How have you been unappreciative in your life? Can you give us some examples? Okay. Um, let me think. I've been unappreciative a lot in the past about, um, for example, in the, a, long, a while back, a couple of years when I used to like, uh, my my parents would like get mad at me a lot because I wasn't a very obedient kid all the time. So like I would be unappreciative of my parents sometimes, which I really shouldn't have been. And you know like you might notice from other teenagers maybe, but like I might have said stuff once in a while that I never meant, but I should not. And that's something. <laughs> <laughs> that 
Hey, Nathan. I have a question. Uh, so you go to a restaurant, right? And I go where? To a restaurant. Okay, a restaurant. Yeah, yeah and you order something, right? And it comes in somewhat cold, somewhat hot. Now, what do you do? If do it comes you out like what? Somewhat cold, somewhat hot. Like cold? Somewhat cold, somewhat hot. Oh. You know. Just like I wouldn't tell them to take it to throw it out. Like if I wanted them to heat it up more, I would like tell them not to throw it out, or I won't, or I don't want to give it to them. But it's like different if they're because if you give them back the whole burger because there's something on it, you're telling them they're gonna throw it out. But if you just say like just warm it up a bit or something, and they actually like do it, I think that's fine. Otherwise, I just put up with it and eat it anyway. So yeah, that's nice piece by the way. Thanks. Very Mashallah. interesting story. Thank you. One uh, last question. Here's a question. Mashallah, it was great, Nathan. Uh, every time we talk about to be appreciative and uh, what are the signs of to be unappreciative, remind me that in Quran, in chapter 76, verse uh, 1 and 2, is talking about when we believe and lead a righteous life, it's synonymous to be appreciative. And the people who are disbelievers are unappreciative. So as a submitter, we may do some signs on unappreciation. But subhanAllah, because we study the Quran and we know God's laws, by repentance, reforming, we become appreciative again. So the truth is, is that the believer is an appreciative person. The disbeliever is an unappreciative person. Thank you. Okay.